Hey there, it's Lisa. Welcome to my glass studio. In this video, I want to share with you a seasonal item. I love Halloween. My family loves Halloween, and I can't get enough of Halloween designs. So I came up with this cute little spider web with this spider on it. Now, some of you might be frightened of spiders, but these are friendly spiders. They don't crawl, they don't itch, they don't get into your cabinets, they don't get under your bed. No, they stay right here on this piece of glass where they're supposed to be. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is use this piece of steel blue to kind of represent a nighttime sky. And I'm gonna cut this piece of clear for a base layer. And then I'm gonna layer the blue on top of the clear. Now this clear is not quite, actually, yeah, it's not quite big enough to do this entire circle. This is an eight inch circle. So I'm gonna cut the glass slightly smaller. We're gonna improvise with the glass that we have on hand. Isn't that great? Because we always like to improvise with what we have on hand because it's what we got on the shelf and we want to use it up. And when we're doing seasonal stuff, you know, it's okay to, to um, go a little smaller, go a little bit bigger, whatever works. Sometimes we work with the glass that we have on hand and other times we just, you know, throw caution to the wind and cut glass based on what our design requires. So this is called a circle pro. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna cut a circle and before I cut the circle, I'm gonna go all the way around the glass and make sure that this cutter wheel is not gonna drop off the glass on any of the four sides because that's not good for the glass and it's not good for the cutter. It can put like a little ding in your cutter or a little indentation or a, you know, a niche or a chunk out of it, then it won't roll well next time. And if it, if it falls off the glass, it could cause the glass to chip and to break. So we don't want that to happen. So, and this piece of glass is just gonna be perfect for this. All right, so I've gone all the way around. We've concluded that it's not gonna fall off the glass. I'm gonna hold on to this right here. Listen to that beautiful score. Oh, we fell off the glass, oopsie. Yeah, well, okay, so now the glass is moving. And <laughs> believe it or not, we came back to the right spot. Look how close that was. Gosh, can you see that? Look how close that was, right to the very edge. That is getting the max out of our glass. Wow, awesome. All right, I'm gonna move these things out of the way. And I'm gonna break this glass off over here to the side where it's not gonna get, the shards aren't gonna get in my work area. Break that off, break this off. I'm using my running pliers and just gently squeezing. See that score line going around? There we go. Then I'm gonna take my grossing pliers and peel off that excess material. This is gonna require a little bit of grinding. That's okay. Anytime you're cutting curves, you know, circles, um, S shapes or whatever, a lot of times the glass will require a little bit of grinding and that's fine. All right, so we've got a circle that I like. I'll put that off to the side. And now because I like to build my pieces with two full layers of glass, I'm gonna cut this pretty steel blue to represent the sky. So we're doing a nighttime sky here with a nighttime scene with this little spider. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm lining up this, this bar with the lines on the surface to make sure that it's perpendicular to this bar over here so that I get a good straight cut. Oh, we got a little piece of glass that wants to stick out of there. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the clear. Now, this piece of glass is a little bit bigger. So I have a little more room for error on this. Oh, maybe not. Oh my gosh. Did I set this as the right thing? Gosh, I don't even know. You know what? Uh, it appears that this is just gonna make it. Well, you know, we are using the maximum we can out of this glass for sure. All right, we're gonna make it. All right, we got it. We got it going on all the way around. All right. Okay. So here we go. Hopefully the glass doesn't move this time. Go <laughs> right off the edge. Okay, right back. Now that one met up beautifully right where it was supposed to. Isn't that nice? I'm gonna move this out of the way. This time I'm gonna take my cutter and do some, you know, external score lines up to that round one to break off this excess glass. Now this material around the outside edge is just scrap. So we're not real concerned about that, but we do wanna do whatever effort is necessary to get a nice circular shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel those pieces off. 
Now I've chosen these pliers because, as opposed to my running pliers, because see this small amount of glass right here? When you use the running pliers, if you're not taking advantage of the full width of the jaw, you're not really clasping onto the glass well. Notice the jaw has a curvature to it. That curvature creates a, um, pressure on the glass and bends it down and out. So if you're not cut, break off a piece of glass, the width of that jaw, you're not taking advantage of that curvature. So the better choice for me at this point is to grow, go right up to that score line with these grosers and do a gentle down and out motion and pull that glass away. Now this one is coming out so beautifully, I don't even think it's gonna need any grinding. Yeah, look at that. That, that circle came out really nice. So that one, I don't even know. We won't even grind it. Now let's compare the two and see how they look together. And they look fabulous. Now I already cleaned this glass with water and a sponge and then I dried it with a towel. I like to clean and dry my glass before I get started so that I know when I assemble my project, it's clean and dry. All right, so we have our clear and our blue cut and ground and laid down on our pattern and they look great. Terrific. All right, now let's make our little spider. This is gonna be the fun part. So I love the idea of my spider being dichroic, of course. So the spider is two little circles. So what I'm gonna do is take, uh, where did my Sharpie go? Here's my Sharpie. I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna trace a little circle on top of this dichroic. Because the circle cutter will not cut something this tiny. So I just kind of drew a little circle on there. Now I'm going to take my cutter, just cut straight across, break it off, straight across. I'm basically just going to kind of cut the corners off. And this doesn't have to be perfectly round or perfectly smooth. It's okay if it's a little bumpy. And we'll take our pliers and remove that material. And the great thing about the grosers, now I try to avoid grinding my dichroic because it'll chip the pretty coating. So what I'm gonna do is take the grosers, and you see where this edge is kind of rough right here? I'm just gonna take the grosers, get my fingers out of your way, and I'm gonna grab those pointy areas and just kind of peel them off. Look how nicely that works. And it kind of gives us a nice shape. And like I said, this doesn't have to be a perfect circle, so I think that's actually terrific. All right, there we go, we got the body. Now let's cut a little piece for the head. So I'll just cut a smaller square. And then I'm gonna take my grosers and just kind of nip it. Actually, I'm wondering, maybe I should make the head a different color. That would be kind of cool, because this is kind of a weird pattern for a head, isn't it? It kind of looks like he's, I don't know, doing something funny. I'm gonna grab Another piece of dichroic, maybe a blue or a gold. Matter of fact, I thought I had one, but who knows where that ended up. Ooh, look at this piece. I just found this pretty gold one over there on the shelf. I think that might make a more uh, a spider that shows up better on this dark blue. So I think I'm gonna put this guy off to the side for now and recut a spider out of this material. Because the whole idea is to make it show up, right? We want it to look pretty. Let's see, get that off in there. And this time, rather than even cutting the circles, we're just gonna grows our way around. We've got to sweep all that little dichroic up and save it. Ooh, you know what? Maybe we'll put it on top like little tiny sparkles or starlight or uh, moonlight on there. Oh, there's our spider. I'll take this piece, I think would be great for the head. Make it a little smaller. And we'll grow that little guy up. There we go. Okay, I got a spider and we have a little head. Oh, he's a little, a little chunky looking, but that's okay. Look how cute he is. Very nice. Okay, now we're gonna move him to the side temporarily. All right, so uh, spider legs. Uh, let me grab this thing over here. We got a bit of a mess, so we'll use this towel to kind of wipe that away. So we have a cleaner work area. Now, I would really prefer a dustpan, but don't have one handy, so we'll do what we do. Um, okay, legs. I've got this little thing of stringers. Let's pour these out and see what we've got in here. And I was thinking, since this is nighttime sky, 
that I would make the spider web a variety of colors instead of just black or clear. So I think I'm gonna use, you go in here and get some bright colors. I've got this pretty orange here. Put that on there and then just break it to size. And maybe a red. Now I'm not gonna overlap these because then they won't sit nicely. So instead I'm gonna kind of, um, you know, just break them so they fit. And actually, I don't even have to have two the same on either side. There we go. Uh, now I am looking for opaque colors. Opaque meaning that they will show up nicely on this dark color that I'm working with. This little red piece is gonna go, actually we'll do this one here. Hold still, this one here and this one over here. Well, like that, this one here. And then let's put this one here. I'm just breaking them with my fingers. There we are. Now let's see if we can come up with any other colors. This green, is that? That's an opaque, sure. Let's use that. Although this green would make great spider legs. All right, what other color do we have in here that's opalescent? We've got this pretty yellow, and look, oh my, it's going to fit right there. In fact, let's do this yellow one here because it might fit better. There we go. Perfect. All right, so uh, I'm going to, this is hairspray in a little tiny bottle with a little tiny applicator tip. And it, the nice thing about it is you can just kind of pour out one little drop. So I'm going to take this green one and trim it a smidge so it overhangs a little bit. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna take this yellow one, this orangey marigold one, glue it first, because everything else kind of works around it. And the nice thing is you can just drip this glue on there. It doesn't, um, it doesn't make the pieces shift. It dries pretty quickly and it burns off without leaving a trace, so all good. And you know what, if you have a bad hair day, you're good to go, you got hairspray right there in your studio. All right, drop that on there. A little bit over here. I already did that. Okay, that's looking good. Sometimes I think I should have tweezers handy, and I didn't think about it in advance, but that's all right. This is working just fine. Now, I think a wise person would let this dry for a few minutes before they move forward, but <laughs> that's not always me, so let's just move forward. All right, I like this green. And I think I'm going to use it right here. Oops, see, it wants to move. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to put it on top. I'm going to put it inside. So I'm changing, I'm changing up my design a little bit. I'm putting these pieces inside these triangular shapes instead of on top. Let's see if we've got some more yellow. This blue, I don't think this blue is opaque. Nope, that's not going to show up. So we don't want to use that. All right, here's some red. A red one here. Very nice. Maybe another red one here. Okay, I'm liking the way this is working. Uh, maybe another green one right there. Or maybe we save this green one for down yeah. here. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Because we're trying to, I don't have a lot of this green and I like it. Or maybe we put this green one over here. Yes, I like that. And let's put an orange over here. Looking good. And maybe a red over here. There we go. And you can see that tweezers would probably be very handy about now. All right, that one's too long. Maybe a little shorter. Now, I'm not really concerned about these matching up perfectly. I think visually they're going to match up nice. So if they don't line up just right, that's okay. All right, now I'm going to take my glue, go back and let's bring this one out a little bit. This one in a little bit. We're going to just drip some glue on there. There we go. And we're going to work our way around. All right, I went ahead and got another tube of stringers because I was running out of opalescent colors. So, and this one, this 
uh, container has this pretty color, which we have not used yet. It's kind of a, um, like a neon yellow. Let's see where I can get this one to fit. Maybe over here. Nope. I'm going to, maybe I can use that in the interior here. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put one in here. All right. There we go. And maybe do another one right here. I'm going to use a stringer as a little tool to maneuver that around where I want it. There we go. Okay. All right, now maybe, let's see, there's a lot of orange in here. Here's another one of the yellows. Is that the same color? Yes, it is, so let's not. Let's do something different. Here, oh, here's an orange. We already have some orange, but here's a nice, uh, nice one that might work nicely. This size might work nicely. Oh boy, oh boy, now I did it. There we go. Yes, if you have time, I would recommend you let this dry before you move to the next segment because it would be a whole lot easier. There we go. Oh, I like this yellow. I wish I had more of that green. I'll go to this orange. Put this here. I love working with this kind of variety of colors. It's almost like, you know, the moonshine the moon is shining on this and reflecting and giving it different colors. I can come up with all sorts of stories for my work. Now this one is nice and big, so I'm going to see if I can use it whole somewhere. Yeah, look at that right there. Awesome. All right, I need some green. I wish I had more of that green. But I don't. Here's another orange. That might work somewhere. Yep, that'll work right there. Maybe, oops, oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's see, here's a red. Put this red one over here. All right, I like the way this is coming out. There's another red. Let's see if this one fits here. Look at this, I'm not even having to cut some of these. They're just kind of working out right from the container. Isn't that nice? Now I have orange right there, so what other color can I use? All right, I think I'm going to go look and see if I can find a container with more colors. All right, come on with me. We're coming over here. Look, I have all of these tubes. Oh, there's that bright yellow. I have all these tubes, but I tend to use a lot of the same colors. So I tend to be out of a lot of the same colors. Now here's another tube. All right, let's take these over there and we'll see what we have. The, this is so fun, being able to use all of these different materials, all these stringers, and get this really cool spider web going on over here. Boy, I just love this season. I'm not really a fan of spiders, to be honest with you, but I do like this spider. All right, here we go. Oh. This does not look like it has anything, oh, except for that one piece all the way down at the bottom. Well, we're going for it. There it is. There's that yellow one. That's it. That's all we have out of here that's opaque. Well, here's another yellow one. Oh, there's another yellow one. Oh boy, there we go. Boom. All right, so we've got this greeny yellow. I like that. Look how nice that looks. Put that right there. And this tiny one, put over here and then this yellow is a little different oops we're moving everything around there we go that's all right all right there we go uh, let's see what else we have oh, here's this yellow one let's see where that fits well that's gonna go right there I like that okay so we need some more in the center there um, there's two shades of red here. I've got this red, and then I have this red. And I have two shades of yellow, or actually maybe three. This is kind of an orangey one. Let's put this one over here. And 
and I think that's looking great. Now we're going to do a few more in the middle here. There we go. And what color do we want to use for that last, those last two? Maybe this orange. That's going to be a tiny one. There we go. Now let's pull that one out a little bit. There we go. And let's see, no green. None of that cool green. Darn it all. It must mean I like it because I used it all up. All right, we'll put another orange one right here. Here we go. There we go. And let's see, we have red. Where's that neon? Here it is, this color. Let's put some of that in the middle here. This one tends to be a little fatter, thicker than the other ones. It's a little harder to cut. Here we go. All right. All right, now it's glue time. And after I glue, I can go back in and adjust these a little bit. So I'll put a little dab of glue on each of these. And notice they don't line up just right. This is kind of a, um, a fun house spider web, if you will, because not everything lines up just right. That's okay. Now, all right, so you've heard me say, do your best work. This is not me being skimpy here. This is me just having fun. So when I say do your best work, I mean, do your best work while you're having fun. If you're making something that's just kind of playful like this, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overthink it. Just enjoy yourself. And a lot of times, when I do projects like that, that's where my new art, my new pieces, the idea for them comes from, is from this kind of free play that, you know, children know how to do it all the time. As adults, we sometimes get away from it. And sometimes you should get back to it. So <clears throat> I'm going to take this little, before this glue dries, I'm going to take this, um, I'm going to use one of these little guys as a tool and try to line these up nice, a little bit more nicely. Uh, but again, it's an organic thing, it's a nature thing. There we are. Cool. The middle could use a little bit of work. Oh, there we go, I think, that I'm liking the way that's happening there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, look, it turned out quite fun. All right, so now we've got our spider and we want him to have some legs. Now, usually I would use black for the legs, but I'm kind of concerned that they're going to get absorbed by this um, blue background and disappear. So maybe our spider has uh, yellow legs, these neon yellow legs. But then, I don't know, is that going to compete with the, you know, with the, um, you know, with the rest of the stuff we have going on here? I'm not sure. And also, how do we get that little spider to stay? We may have to prop him up with some little pieces of noodle. Let's try that. Put some noodle there and there. Let's glue those down. And then we'll put the spider on top. Like that. And I'm purposely putting his little head. Oh, you know what? Actually, I just got a better idea. We will put the legs down and let the legs hold the spider up. There we go. Let's get that out of the way. All right, and so legs. Do we want this color? No. What color do we want for the legs? Something a little more mellow, but something that will show up on this dark blue. Well, let's go with these skinny little red legs. All right. So how many legs does my spider have? He has eight. So I'm going to make like a little nest, a little spider nest of legs for my spider. They're sticking to my fingers now. This is just one of those days where, you know, thank goodness we're doing stuff for fun because everything I'm trying to do <laughs> that's not for fun is not necessarily going well. I'm sure you have those days too, right? I was in working on the computer, everything was, was like fighting me. So this is a much better way to spend our afternoon. Look at this, I'm gonna make it the little legs. 
And the little legs are not only going to be the little legs, but they're also going to prop up our spider just the way we want it to. Oh, that one's too long. Oh boy, now we did it. Oh boy, let's get back there. All right. All right, so you know what I'm going to do from here on out is I'm going to keep a pair of tweezers with my cutting tools so I don't have to remind myself. Get some tweezers, Lisa. They're already there by this by your work area. Here, I got to make three more legs. There we go. That one's really long, but so what? All right, one more leg. All right, here's the last leg. I'm out. <coughs> <laughs> I'm out to my last leg. That's funny. Sometimes I just laugh at myself. There we go. Let's glue those babies down. Now, um, I like to use the least amount of glue possible. Uh, today, that is not, that's, um, this is a little bit of a rule breaker here. Oh boy, now what am I going to do? I got to move it without moving all those legs. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It moved without moving. All right, now let's put the little head down. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Look, it even has a little attitude. Look, he's, he's kind of cocking his head a little bit. And look at that, those little legs worked out. They were a terrific solution for putting that spider on there. All right, so I love the way this is coming out. Now I've got these little shards here and that we can't let that go to waste, but I'm not gonna just grab them with my hand. I'm gonna go over here and grab a brush and a little piece of paper and we'll use that to scoop them up. So let me head over here. And this was something that I had not anticipated needing, so I didn't bring it over to my work area. So this is one of those impromptu things that you get to enjoy about hanging out with me here in my studio, is how the designs sometimes kind of take a life of their own and they kind of, you know, just happen. And then we get these different little, you know, variations. All right, so look at that dichroic there. And let's just kind of sprinkle that on, and see what happens. Now some of it's up, some of it's down. Ooh, isn't that pretty? And we're using every last little bit of it. Not nothing's going to waste here. And so now it would be a good idea. You know, to build this project, if you, now that you know you might want to reclaim some of these little pieces, it might be a good idea to build this on like a slightly bigger piece of paper. So you wouldn't have to worry about any of the, you know, stuff on your table getting into your work. Ooh, look at there's a nice big piece. Do we want to leave it? Sure we do. All right, let's go over here and get some more. All right, bring all that together. There we go, sweep that up. So yeah, normally I would just sweep this up and put it in a little container, but here uh, it seems to be working well for us to use it on our project. Give a little more detail. Now this will be kind of subtle, won't show up too much. And I'm wondering if maybe we should do a little bit of this on the spider's body. Ooh, you know what we need on the spider's body? Is some clear frit. Clear frit will make him look like he has little spots. So let me go get some clear frit. Okay, so look what I went and got. So now we're ready. I didn't, wasn't sure how I was gonna get this frit out of this jar otherwise. All right, so, we're at, so when you put clear on top of dichroic, it kind of makes it look like it's, um, the clear sinks in and gives the dichroic kind of a, a pretty depth to it. So I'm putting a little bit, of, this is clear, water clear, medium frit, and I'm putting it on top of my spider. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put two pieces I'm going to try to, put to, to make some eyes for him. There, maybe that will look like an eye. We'll see. Not quite sure. See if I can find another one of similar size and shape. That's kind of silly, isn't it? There we go. Oh, all right. He's a little bit cross-eyed at this point. All right, I'm going to try to avoid. I'm going to leave that. He's a little goofy looking. I, I'm cool with that. Right, come on, get off there. Um... So we've got some spots on his body. We've got some stuff going on here. All right, what are you, are you guys out there calling for more dichroic? Are you calling for some dichroic frit? Do I hear you? Do oh, it! Do I heard it? Okay, we're going into the special drawer, the secret drawer of wonderfulness. Ooh, look at this. 
We got clear dichroic in here. Let's put a little bit of that in the background. Ooh, yeah, now we're talking. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And that's the starlight. We're calling, gonna call that the starlight that's reflecting off our piece. And the sun, or no, there's no sun because it's nighttime, but. The dew drops. Just, yeah, oh, that's excellent, dew drops. What do we think? I, I mean, it could always use more, but uh, I don't want to overdo it for the first time ever. Says no one ever about dichroic. I don't want to overdo it. Says no one ever. That's a new t-shirt design right there. That's going to be a hot seller. You watch. All right, so I'm going to turn these over because I want to try to get, I want to try to get the dichroic side up if I can figure out which side that is. Move around a little bit. All right, yeah, that's a beautiful piece right there. Let's put that over here by our spider. Put some over here. All right, hey you, get back on there and stay. There we go. We want you to be fired in. All right, so I'm pretty pleased with the way this turn this is coming out. And I believe it's done and kiln ready. So we're gonna fire this to a full fuse temperature and then I'll bring it back and we'll see what it looks like. Hi, welcome back to the studio. So we fired our little spider and spider web overnight. We fired it to a full fuse temperature and let's see what we have. Oh boy, look how exciting. Isn't it so adorable? I'm really happy with those colors on that steel blue background. You can really see the web and I think these are nice seasonal colors. And look, we've got those little specks of dichroic we used in there, give it a little glisten. Isn't that nice? And the spider. I, so I went ahead and I put little pieces of clear frit on top of the spider because when you put clear frit or clear glass on top of dichroic, it melts in and gives it a really cool look. So it looks like he has spots. And he's got creepy little eyes because he's a creepy little spider. The legs came out great. Everything's nice and smooth. Love it. Uh, I love the, you know, all the different colors of the spider web and the way it kind of comes together. The back is really nice and smooth. So fabulous. So this is an 8-inch circle. So I think I'm going to go ahead and slump it, give it a little curvature. And maybe I will put some uh, candy corn or something in it. Let's see. So we're going to take out this. Um... Oh, boy. Well, we've got a stormy day. Take that shelf out. I'll take these little kiln posts out. And I'm going to take this mold, this square mold, which works well for round pieces as well. And I'm going to take my glass, center in the mold here. And we're going to take this to a slumping temperature, fire overnight. And then we will have a beautiful, beautifully shaped contoured bowl when it comes out. So we're going to go ahead and fire that. And then we'll come back, we'll open the kiln and see what we have. Welcome back to the studio. So, you know, things are crazy around here. Uh, you know, last night we were filming during a thunderstorm and we had some thunder in our video. Today we have construction happening on our street. So it's just day in the life of the artist. But you know what? Art never stops. Creativity never stops. It doesn't matter what's going on outside there. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep plugging. We're going to keep making things. And and we're going to keep having a great time. So today we are going to, we have um, full fused the spider web with the spider. Then we slumped it and it's getting ready to come out of the kiln right now. So let's check it out and see what it looks like. Open this kiln and here it is. Our little spider. Well, go ahead and check it out in the mold. And look how lovely that is. Now I slumped a round project in a square mold. And the reason I did that is because I'm familiar with this mold and I know that it works beautifully on round pieces. So as long as it's larger than your fused piece of glass, you can use different shapes molds. You don't have to match the shape of your project to the shape of your mold. What you do is just make sure that your glass is smaller than the mold because if it's bigger than the mold, it uh, will oftentimes slump unevenly and like, you know, kind of off to one side, not unevenly. So your wall, your, the height of your walls and your project is not uniform. So it's important that your mold be larger than your glass, but it doesn't have to be the same shape as your glass. So that's kind of fun and exciting. So I look, we've got this nice curvature here, got that pretty steel blue color. Uh, it's even kind of interesting from the back. You know, you can see those dark lines. Um, and uh, I'm pretty pleased with this. We've got the very colorful stringers. Now I think um, clear stringers wouldn't have shown up, so that would be a good choice. Black stringers would have been okay, but this is much more festive, I think, and colorful. And, you know, it's kind of a fun little 
uh, seasonal project and if you're going to do a fun little seasonal project why would you just use plain black stringers? Why wouldn't you use colorful stringers and make it a little more you know, creative and a little more spunky? So really loving the way this came out. Um, the little spider, he's adorable. He's got little eyes and little spots and little legs and the dichroic accents here are nice. Give it a little shimmer, almost like little dew drops on, the, um, on this piece. So I'm loving it, loving it. I'm gonna definitely put some wrapped candy in this and uh, put it in the house or, um, you know, or give it as a gift or something. Anyway, had a great time making this. Hope you enjoyed making it and hope, to make, you know, uh, I know a lot of people are afraid of spiders, but you don't have to be afraid of this one. This one's friendly and it stays exactly where it's supposed to all the time. You don't have to worry about sneaking up on you. You don't have to worry about your shoe. You don't have to worry about, it, you know, climbing up the wall. Nothing like that. So friendly spider stays where he's put. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this dish. It's an eight inch piece. Nice manageable size for you no matter what size kiln you have. Manageable, manageable size for the amount of material you're going to use because it's not a whole lot. And uh, manageable size for your other materials because you don't need a lot of really anything to achieve this and have a good time. You could also use noodles. You could also cut narrow strips of glass if you didn't have stringers in your studio. So a variety of different ways you could put this together. Just have fun with it. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this spider bowl in this festive season of time of year where we have, you know, spooky decorations in our home that we really enjoy. So please like, follow, share, subscribe, and please consider becoming a member of my premium video membership. We've got new videos coming out all the time. We're having a great time making new videos, some more elaborate videos. The difference between these videos and those is uh, they're more in depth. It's a complete course, beginning to end. You get everything from the um, step by step instruction. You get a, a printable pat full size pattern ebook along with the video. You get that project, my guidance from the very beginning to the very end, complete course. And you really know how to make something. And each of my projects um, utilizes a different technique or an advanced technique that you're going to really enjoy using. And even if you don't use it for that particular project, you will enjoy learning how to apply those advanced techniques to apply them in your own work in the future. So please consider becoming a premium video member. We'd love to have you on board. And until next time, happy fusing.